or someone might, someone might be suffering from an illness like a cancer or something. They pray to God, God doesn't answer them. Another person has the same exact issue, same scenario, God answers their prayers. And you may think that's chance. No, it's actually an answered prayer. Why does God answer some and does not answer others or ignore others? Because he's not, because it is ignoring because he hears it. So it is ignoring. It's not like he didn't hear it, so he didn't ignore it. No, he heard it, but he's ignoring it. Why? Sometimes God has an answer for someone's prayer and it's definite answer and he will not change his mind about it. But this is not mostly the case all of the time. Let me give you examples about what I'm talking about. Moses committed a certain sin which prohibited him from entering the promised land. And whenever Moses would bring... The, la the last time Moses brought it up, God, to God told him in an anger, he said, you will not enter the promised land. Do not bring up this subject to me ever again. So that's a scenario where Moses is pleading with God, but God is telling him, no, the answer is no, do not bring up that subject ever again. And the reason for that is because of Moses' predicament. He should have known better. We're talking about Moses. And also the situation is also important. But now you may have someone, give me a second. You may have someone like Hezekiah. Hezekiah faced a certain illness and he was going to die. The prophet Isaiah told him, you're going to die. Arrange your affairs because you're going to die. Like, organize your household. Let, let us know who's going to replace you as king because you're going to die. Then Hezekiah prayed to God. And God healed him and added, I don't know if it was 14 years more to his life, something like that. And you also have the scenario with Manasseh, wicked king Manasseh of Israel, who sacrificed his children to pagan gods, committed heinous crimes against God, I mean against his fellow men and sinned against God. God punished him and when he repented, God reinstated him as king over Israel. Why did God answer these particular individuals prayers? And why does he answer certain particular individuals prayers today? You, you have to touch the heart of God. No matter how wicked your sins may be. Give me a second. I'm, I'm so sorry. No matter how wicked your sins may be. There is no unforgivable sin except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And there is no punishment from God that God would give you that you cannot touch his heart enough where he would undo that punishment. And if that is the case for punishment from the Almighty, then what about situations where you are not being punished like wicked King Manasseh? You are not being punished how much more so than in that scenario where you're not being punished, would God not undo or remove that sickness or situation from you if you touch him enough, right? If he is not, if, if you could commit a sin where he would punish you, where he would punish you because of the sin, and yet you can touch him if, if, your, if your prayer and your apology is sincere enough, it will touch him to the point where he would undo the punishment and reward you. Then what about a situation where you are not being punished? It is just your lot in life. If you touch him enough, surely he will undo that situation for you. Wicked King Manasseh committed the, the, the sins that he committed, but his prayer to God, his apology to God, must have been sincere, so sincere and genuine that one, you can't fool God. So his, so Manasseh's prayer to God was so sincere that God saw that, no, this, this is a genuine repentance. Manasseh is not gonna do what he did ever again. God knows that. So God reinstated him to his kingship and rewarded him. King Manasseh, was not sick. I mean, King Hezekiah was not sick because of a punishment. He was sick because he was just going to get sick, right? Just because of genetics. 
defect in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the body. So, again, but his prayer also was heartfelt, genuine, crying with real tears, not crocodile tears. Because again, you can't fool God. Once we, once we apply this, right, we will, there's a reason why Christ said that the Almighty is looking for people to serve him in spirit and truth. Spirit, I made videos on this, spirit basically just means emotions and truth. So true emotions, you're not fake about your emotions toward God. This is why David was genuine, was loved by God. He was called as a man after God's own heart because he was a musician. Very, very spiritual, emotional man. And with that emotion, he served God with that emotion and he was genuine about it. Spirit and truth. Something else I was gonna say, but it just, it just flees my mind. Oh, it, I, I remember. There's a passage in the Bible where it says that God jealous, jealously longs for the spirit that he has caused to dwell within us. What does that mean? Think about it. He jealously longs for the spirit, the emotions that he has caused to dwell within us. He jealously wants us to express those emotions back to him. He made us in his image. He, he wants us to touch him. He wants to be moved by our actions, by our words and actions and true emotions. David did, did these things. That's why God loved David so much. If a person can, can, if you wanna be rich, if you are sick, whatever situation it is, if, if there are two persons, one prays to God that he wants to be rich. And we know from Solomon's scenario that God would much rather you not ask for riches. However, if you want to be rich, from what place is it coming from? Does it, is it out of, vain pursuits, most likely God would not answer such a prayer. But if it's, I want to be rich so that I don't want to go through these sufferings in life, like Jabez. Jabez cried out to the true God in the book of Chronicles. He cried out to the true God and his name means pain. So that shows you when you name, when pa parents, when you name a child, forgive me for deviating too many times. Parents, when you name your child, make sure you give them a good name because that actually has power over their life. Jabez means pain. His mother named him because of situations that she was going through and named him Jabez, which means pain. And his life was very painful. And the account says, he cried out to the true God. Oh, if only you would bless me and, and enlarge my territory and may your hand be with me that I'll be, so that I'll be free from pain. His prayer must have been genuine and heartfelt and was not crocodile tears or fake. Spirit and truth, true emotions which God jealously longs for. It touched the Almighty so much that the, that the, 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 the phrase after, the, after, that, after that prayer was, and God granted his request. If you are in pain in life, if you are suffering in life, and you beg the Almighty that this is why you want not riches, but enough where you are well off and you don't have to work a nine to five and struggle. If you can touch him enough, he will grant that request. It has to be heartfelt. This is the reason why most people do not have their answers, their prayers answered until they hit rock bottom. And this has happened to me time and time and time and time and again. He waits until you hit rock bottom. He will not answer until you hit rock bottom. But if you can touch him before you hit rock, because when you hit rock bottom, that is when you have no choice but to be real about what you're asking for. And that's when you touch him and, right? But if you can be, if you can foresee it, if you can make a good case, if you can touch God's heart enough, that is where he is moved to then answer your prayer. That's why God answers prayers of people who are actually crying and it's not crocodile tears and it's genuine tears. There's a video uh, that surfaced, has millions of views of this woman who she gave birth and her son was dead, was not breathing for however many minutes. And so she's holding her son and she's speaking in Portuguese, I believe, that the language sounds like it's Portuguese. 
she must have been Brazilian. And she's praying to God. And she's crying and she's praying. And you can tell it's a it's it like it just it, it gives you uh, goosebumps. She wants her son to be alive. And all of a sudden her, her baby starts crying. God answered that prayer. You have to touch the heart of God to the point where even if he has punished you, he will undo that punishment. David knows this. That's why David kept pr praying for his son that died. Well, we don't know if it was his son or not. I don't believe it was. I don't, I don't remember if it was a son, but remember when he had a child through Bathsheba? The second one lived, Solomon. But the first one, God killed. But David was praying. Well, before the baby died, David was praying that God would, you know, heal him. Because David knows that you can touch the heart of God where he would answer prayers. So this is the reason why some people's prayers are not answered, but others are. My mother prayed many times to be healed from her sicknesses. God did not answer. She died. He didn't answer my prayers for her to not die. I prayed many times. He did not answer. Obviously, the prayers that I was making and the prayers that my mom was making were heartfelt, obviously, but it was not heartfelt enough. There were not tears flowing from my eyes when I prayed for my mom. There weren't. And I'm pretty sure when my mom was praying, there weren't really tears flowing from her eyes, or maybe there were, but it wasn't strong enough. She didn't really want it badly enough. I didn't want it badly enough. Someone else, they wanted it badly. More than anything else, they wanted it. And God granted their request. There's a difference. And it's not very easy to make those type of prayers. It's not. That's why most prayers like that do not get answered. And it also is about unwavering faith while you are making those prayers. Because without the faith, you're not going to move that mountain. It's not going to happen. But with faith, unwavering faith, where there is not a shred of doubt in your mind that he is there and he hears you, that you will literally move mountains with that. But it's not easy. It is not easy. So um, hopefully this will help you to understand, you know, Cain was able to touch God enough where God actually said he would punish someone else seven times if they were to strike Cain. Cain, who just killed his brother Abel. You know, Manasseh, the wicked things he did after God punished him, he touched God's heart enough where God undid it. Hezekiah made up a case with God and said, remember all the things I've done in your name, what I've done for the nation of Israel. Remember me. And he was weeping profusely to the point where even before Isaiah could head out of a certain um, uh, spot where he was in, he was still within the, 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 the castle, I believe. Before he even got out the doors, God told Isaiah, turn back and speak to Hezekiah because you know, he, he has, he has touched me, you know, some, just read the account. And God said, you know, I would, I would give you, I would add this many years to your life. And it was a lot of years. And then God even went as far as to say, ask for me a sign and I'll give you a sign, you know, and, 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 and the sign that God gave Hezekiah literally turned back time. God moved back the, the route of the sun. Those of you who don't believe that the sun is the one that moves around us and the earth is actually stationary. And if you're a Christian, you got some digging to do because according to the Bible, the sun is the, the earth is stationary and the sun rotates. But God turned back time. And there's actually proof that that was a time where even the Mayans and the Aztecs turned back, turned back their calendars. But that's a different video. And I can make a video on that also. But it's going to take a lot of like, uh, there's, I, I can make a video on that. But look at what God did because someone touched his heart. Jehovah jealously longs for the spirit that he has caused to dwell within us. And Christ said, God is looking for those who worship him in spirit and truth. These are the sort of people that God is looking for. David was such a man. Hopefully, I, I, I would like to think I'm such a man, but I, I, I can't say that about myself. The Almighty will have to say that about me. All right, let me not let this video drag on too long. Um, hopefully this was edifying to some of you and sorry for not posting for long, for, for a long period of time. But um, like I said, I only like to make videos when I feel impelled to make the videos. 
Alright. Peace.